And so one of the things that we talked about when we came in here was was your actual physical space of your office and all the pictures that you have everywhere. And we had a good conversation about it, and I guess I could just ask you to repeat what you said because it was so profound. But I do find it interesting the spaces that we work in and how we you know try to surround ourselves. And there's a great quote, I'm going to botch it, but I'll paraphrase that you know, your, your external space reflects your internal space. So if you're organized externally, you'll be organized internally, which I'm not the most organized person externally. Mm-hmm. So I've, but I've tried to incorporate that. Right. And so I come into your office and there's just pictures everywhere. And that seems very intentional, right. That you've surrounded yourself with in this way. Cody, I, I, I don't make any apologies for wanting to be successful. You know, I, I'd never cheated. I never don't uh, take the shortcuts for success in fact, every year I tell our team, we're not going to look for shortcuts. We're going to purposely search out the hard way to do mm. it so that when we get to hold that big trophy up above our head, we're going to know we did it the right way, mm. and it's going to mean an awful lot more to us. So um, I think it's the American way. I think I think you're supposed to try to succeed. I think that's what my job is here, not just to win games and win championships to keep the the LSU fans and, and everybody else happy, but to teach our, our young men that are in our program what it takes to be successful. Mm-hmm. Because today, hey, it's going to be on the friendly fields of strife, you know, representing LSU. But later in life, it's going to be a more important, you know, how to make that sale, how to be successful while you're performing surgery, how to maintain a wonderful relationship with a spouse or to guide your children through tough times when they're having them. And, and all of the things that they learn through college athletics are the things that they're going to apply later on in life to be able to have a happy, successful life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, uh, earlier this week, I had a phone call with a former player of mine who's going through a real challenging thing in his life right now. You know, he's, he's, he's very ill, and, and um, it's, it's a life-threatening situation. And he reached out to me because he needed to talk to me. He needed me to motivate him and inspire mm-hmm. him to, to keep fighting and that, you know, he was feeling sorry for himself and that, that's not what I taught him to do. And he kind of needed me to kind of chew him out a little bit and kind of get him back online and keep fighting this thing that, you know, for me, that's, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm supposed to do that, you know, the, the fact that this young man reached out to me at a time when he desperately needed some motivation and to be inspired to keep fighting the good fight makes me feel like I'm validated as a coach because that's why I went into coaching. You know, my father was a coach, as I mentioned earlier in the interview. And when I told him I wanted to be a coach, that's basically what he told me. Don't go into coaching unless you're doing it for the right reasons. And the right reasons are to impact young people, to teach them what it takes to be successful. Don't do it because of the prestige. Don't do it because of winning. Don't do it because of maybe you make some money someday. You have to do it for the young men that you're going to be coaching. And whether I coached at St. Thomas or the Air Force Academy or Notre Dame or at a, here finally at LSU, maybe the pressure to win has been ratcheted up mm-hmm. with, the, with each step along the way. But my vision of what my role is in these young people's lives has never changed. So you mentioned about all these pictures on the wall behind me. You know, basically that's my life up there. Mm -hmm. And and I call it my humble wall because these pictures all, they're not, some people are famous. You know, there's some famous people up there, but not most of them. Most of them are people that, that have been an impact in my personal life that have either supported me, given me an opportunity, been with me at a key moment in life, have been very instrumental in the success that we have had. So whenever I start thinking, hey, I'm pretty good at what I do, I always look up at that wall and realize that you never did anything alone. Mm -hmm. There had to be other people that were there to support you, help you do the work, and so forth. And um, so I I look at that wall quite frequently because it, it just reminds me of how fortunate, how lucky I've been in my lifetime to do what I love doing and that we've had enough success that I've been able to do it for a long time. We talked before and you said you could literally go through every single picture and tell the story. Um, we don't have time for that, but is there one, is there one that you've looked at maybe recently in the last couple of days and that you hadn't looked at in a while? Cause I'm the, I'm looking at the frame behind you. It almost looks like an Instagram grid mm-hmm. for, for our uh, millennial listeners. It's, you know, 
I mean, it's it's dozens and dozens of pictures. Is there one that stands out? Maybe from recent days that you you just you looked at. You want me to stand up and show it to you, or <laughs> you want me to just tell you about it? Uh, you can, you can I, point I did, out it if you want I, to. I looked at it the other day because if the camera follows me over here, <laughs> yeah, see how the, talented the, our camera Microphone's got some is. reach. But um, this this picture, um, where where did I have it? Okay, uh, it's a the third row from the top. There's a picture. There's three pictures there, but the the main picture is my myself, my dad, and Tommy Lasorda. Mm-hmm. And that was literally the day, the moment that I met Tommy Lasorda. And so when he recently passed away, you know, I had kind of a private moment for myself where I came back to my office. I think I had counted 16 pictures I have of him on mm-hmm. my wall. He's everywhere. Somewhere. But, but that day kind of brought back memories. I was 25 years old, and I had met him after a golf tournament that my dad was hosting. And he came down to, this was after the tournament, we were having lunch, and he came down to grab me and said, would you like to meet Tommy Lasorda? And I said, sure. And uh, that was 1984, I guess. And Lasorda had won the world championship in 1981 for his first championship. Mm -hmm. And um, we struck up a conversation. At that time, ironically, I was working at a school called St. Thomas University. Mm -hmm. And after the luncheon ended, he he and I went behind a wall in the lobby of the Doral Hotel in Miami, Florida, and he spent like four hours with me, just talking to me, just he and I. Nobody nobody saw us. We were just, and it began a relationship that I had with him until the day that he passed. And uh, it was a wonderful thirty eight years of of mentoring, of guiding me, of of teaching me lessons, of giving me experiences that you couldn't pay for. And, uh, you know, when I, when we lost him, it was like losing my father all over Mm -hmm. again. So I looked at that picture and I, you know, the two men that I cherish most in in my life, my father and Tommy Lasorda, you know, that was the day that my dad brought us, brought Lasorda and I together.